I dropped my Christmas present is a floofy. <laughs> accidentally. <laughs> <laughs> okay, when you say accidentally, you mean like you found it in a cupboard? No, 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 completely accidentally. So yeah. I was with Ivy in the front room while uh, Lulu was cooking in here. And I just thought, oh, well, let's just put a bit of Teletubbies on for her. So I went onto Sky, went to the Sky menu, and then it said hot picks, today's picks, whatever it was. Um, Leicester versus Fulham, Sky Sports. I was like, we haven't got Sky Sports. Why is... Why has that come on? So I clicked it. Sky Sports. Right. Leicester versus Fulham. I was like, oh, okay. So I went back in here. I was like, Lulu, we've got Sky Sports. She's like, what do you mean? I was like, we've got Sky Sports. And she was like, show me. And she got up and then she was like, no, I can't, I can't pretend. Merry Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, oh, wow, okay. She got, um, apparently got like a quality deal on, on Black Friday off Sky. Yeah. Um, yeah. And I've now got all of Sky Sports. I'm a very, very happy nice. man. Very nice, very nice. And what a way to kick it off for you, Leicester versus Fulham. Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> but I was making the most of it. I was like, come on, Ivy, let's go and watch it. Come on, you see, leave your you mum. I presume um, Liverpool Wolves is on Sky, is it? I, I think it might be, Saturday? yeah. See, that, that would have been the one, really. To, to, <laughs> to, to, to. Um, but yeah, what a great introduction. That's yeah, nice. I, I always remember, there's a famous, uh, there's a, the, um, Ro- we know, remember Royal Family? From yeah, years I do. Ago? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Best episode of that ever was one, I don't know if you remember where they do the, the um, decorating. Yes. Uh, and there's a quote that me and my dad always quote is when this guy's talking about, oh no, it's not that episode, it's a different episode. But there's right. a bit when they're talking about somebody's got Sky in the house. This is like in the early days when nobody really had Sky. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And there's a bit where they're like, what? they've got all the channels, yeah. They've got, they've got the movie channels, yeah. <laughs> they've, got, they've got Sky Sports 1, 2, or 3. Yes, they've got the bloody lot, <laughs> <laughs> And every time me and I talk about Sky, we always do that quote. Mm. I love it. I love it. So very nice. Very nice. Welcome to the Sky family. Mm. Or the Sky, the Sky Sports family. Well, we, we had it, then I couldn't afford it. And then, and then I've just been using my mum's Sky Go on my phone, <laughs> or going to the pub or whatever. But then I can't go to the pub these days. Um, so yeah, so uh, it was a very nice surprise. Got it for a season and a half. Boom. Oh, very nice. Well, on that surprise, welcome everybody to this week's Adapt Question. It's a podcast where we answer the questions you never thought you needed answering. Uh, on the podcast this week, it's my tiny Tim to my Scrooge. It's <laughs> wait, wait, am I Scrooge or my tiny Tim? I don't oh, know which no, one I'd rather hang, be. Hang on, I said that wrong. No, it's your, your, your the tiny Tim to my Scrooge. There we go. Is that even right? That still doesn't make sense. I don't know which. It, it, I think I should be offended by that one. You're, you're a nice person. I'm Scrooge. Let's go for right, that okay, one. Shall okay, we? fine. Okay, okay. It's Mike. Mike. <laughs> How are you doing? I'm very, very well, my friend. How are you doing? I'm good. It's uh, episode one of a two-part packed Christmas episode. It is. I'm looking forward to this. I am. I feel a bit wrong that it's technically the end of November and we're technically recording a Christmas episode. Well, I mean, this is going to go out on the 1st of December. So, it's, yes. and you know, if you flipping go on Facebook for two minutes, everyone's celebrating <laughs> Christmas. So, but we'll so get into okay. that. Yeah, we're okay. It doesn't matter. But we're in the uh, the two pot Christmas episode. Uh, just a full one as well for next week. Obviously, we do more Christmas questions. So any questions you've got uh, for the podcast, try and make them Christmas related if you can, and send them in via the usual channels. Uh, I think we need to go proper ball balls deep into Christmas questions in a second, Michael. Right. Uh, but should we should we get through correspondence? Yeah, let's quickly get through that because we've had. There's been. Some comments on the whole boy band, pop band, busted McFly okay. situation. Um, none of them are, are, are on my side. They're all on your side. You'd be pleased to know. Yes. Um, I didn't see any comments about McFly either, which I was very relieved about. I thought I was going to get a lot of hate. About, about the McFly, McFly and, and Beatles comparison. Beatles reference, yeah. Even someone in a WhatsApp group I was in was like, oh, can you, oh Dave said this. And I was like, yeah, but that, that's a headline. <laughs> Listen to the episode and you've understand the argument. But yeah, I've had no complaints You, you about basically it. said last week that McFly are better than the Beatles. No, I didn't. <laughs> that is... Uh, very much fake news on your part. I, my phone was lighting up. That David, <laughs> you can't trust a brummy. So, uh, oh, <laughs> no. No, 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 no. Right, okay, right. what have people been saying? So, Aunt Graham 
We put mm-hmm. a picture up of Busted. Yes, we did. We had a few comments. Fancy Accents says that Busted are a boy band because only boy bands have frosted tip hairdos. <laughs> logical. I, I think that's logical for that time. Mm. Yeah. I, 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 think I, that... was, I was honestly Googling for about 15, 20 minutes because I thought Travis <laughs> Barker had some sort of frosted tip hairdo, but I couldn't find a picture to back up my argument. <sighs> he might have done at some point. I know he's definitely had a mohawk. At some yeah, point, he had a blonde you know? mohawk, but I don't. I think that was a very loose comparison to frosted tips. <laughs> so unfortunately, I couldn't find anything. So he wins that one. Okay. Um, Sky underscore boy says busted. Don't have a basis, therefore they're a boy band. I thought the the other do. No, I thought the three of them were just three. I didn't think any of them was a basis. No, um, Matt. Willis was the basis. Oh, right, okay. Yeah, yeah, that's oh, definitely... Right. Yeah. <laughs> Screw you, Sky Blue underscore boy. <laughs> Score one for Michael. <laughs> um, John James Bruce says, Busted is a boy band because their music was pop and they had three guitars and probably a backing track behind them. Yes, another point for David there. Thank um, you. My brother says that yeah. when you were a kid, they were a rock band, but as an adult, they're now a boy band. We, yeah. yeah, I can see that. Yeah. Um, and World of Mummy and underscore Noah Isaac underscore. That's a catchy name, that is. <laughs> it is, isn't it? I had to, I had to find, cl- click on tagged pictures to get the full name because it didn't appear on the top of her profile. <laughs> <laughs> um, she basically said they're a Brock band. Clever. A Brock. A Brock a band. Brock. So a boy band and a rock band. Together, ah, David. Okay. A th- rock band. Nothing to do I with thought, wrestling. <laughs> I was going to say, I thought about a Brock Lesnar inspired pop band. Um, and then we did a, so that was all on the Instagrams. And then we did a, a what do they call them? A poll. Yes, that's the one. Thank you very much. There we go. We did, yeah. a, we did a poll on McFly, whether they're a boy band or are they a rock slash pop band or whatever. Um. 68 people said they were a boy band. 32% of people said they were a pop rock band. I think that's fair. That's, that's very much in that grey area still, I think. So that's the uh, the boy band situation covered. Um, and then just two more. Um, brackets Matt came back to us with porridge. Oh, yes, he did. Yep. He clarified his porridge needs. So he said that the porridge was cooked in the microwave to a normal to well-cooked thickness with the addition of raisins. So with that info, yeah. David, would you chew or would you just would swallow? Probably, I think you'd probably still have to chew a tiny I imagine you'd have to chew that. Yeah, especially if you've got raisins in the mix if it was, as well. Yeah, I mean, normal to well-cooked thickness, so that's pretty thick. Yeah. And then with raisins in there as well, like, I can't imagine. Right. But then you get bits of fruit in your yogurts, don't you? Yeah, I you think you'd chew, chew that. that. I, don't know, I don't know what side of the fence Michael, Michael or Matt's on for that one whether he wants it to be chewed or not chewed. But I would say you've got to chew that, mm. surely. I'd say chewed. Okay, right. there's answer that question then. And then finally, um, our friend at Broken ADG mm-hmm. commented on the Sunday feeling, yes. the supposed Sunday feeling that you you <laughs> really went off this week on, um, on, on your own on social media, I noticed. <laughs> I, I, I had to get it in there. I, if I could get a wrestling meme tied into it as well, I was going to take it. We had a countdown and everything, David. <laughs> yes, exactly. Exactly. Um, but um, yeah, what did He what did came back say? saying that when you hear the theme tune to Antiques Roadshow, you know you'll have to have a bath and get your bag ready for school tomorrow. I think that, yeah, yeah. I think that works. I, I can relate to that. Especially if it's Sunday night and you've realised you haven't done your homework. That is very much the prime time yeah. for homework. Sunday night, six o'clock, crap, I haven't done that project. <laughs> I've got to get it. Let me get in car to 95. It was always quickly. Sunday night, though, weren't it? You always did your homework Sunday yeah, night. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Anybody that did it Friday nights, oh, yeah. just, no, I ain't got time for you. I, I, I remember there was a kid at uh, middle school who always said, boasted they did it on Friday night. And I was like, you? Why? Word. Why? You, I don't know, yeah. You, <laughs> We eat vanilla ice. <laughs> yeah. But I think he obviously, logically, he had the mindset of if you do it Friday night, you've got the rest of the weekend. Yeah, but then I'd rather but do a, something Friday night. Yeah, exa- as a kid, the last thing you want to do coming home from school yeah. is, is do your homework. You just want to play. Exactly. You go out, the play pl- tag. Tig. Get, and, yeah, Tig. Yeah, Tig. You call it Tig? Yeah, not tag, it was Tig. I'm sure it was Tig. 
I don't think I've ever heard anyone call it Tig. Is that, is that a northern thing? I'm sure we called it Tig. It was always Tag. Tig and Tag sounds like a another kid's no, show. No, I'm, I'm going with that. I'm, I mean, I'm sure one of my mates will text me tomorrow. But I, I'm going with that. I'm sure it was Tig. Someone tell us. Was it Tig or Tag? I'm sure it was Tag. It was never Kissy Chase for me, I tell you that. <laughs> no one wanted to come near me as a kid. <laughs> Right, um, that's correspondence done. We've rattled through this week because we are desperate to get into Chris's <laughs> questions this time. Okay, then. So, without further ado, let's go on to the first question, Mike. Michael, Christmas trees. It is the big one of the big traditions of Christmas, of course. For some reason, you go outside, you get a big ass tree, and you put it inside your house for no mm. reason. And then, on top of that, you decorate it with random things, put lights on it, put a star on the top. And yeah, that's a sane tradition of Christmas. Yep. Uh, but what I want to know, Michael, to kick ourselves off with the Christmas episodes, is when should you put up your Christmas tree? The very earliest yeah. is 1st of December. Like, the very, very, very earliest. Right? Okay. I'm a two-week kind of guy. Two weeks beforehand, we'll put them up. Yeah. I can understand... <clears throat> to a degree, why someone would put them up first of December? Yeah, and then as the weeks get on, that's fine. But my God, the amount of people that are putting them up at the minute is just—I just don't get it. So I'm very much let's let's get this out of the way. Very much in your camp, Percy Michael. Mid December, yeah, two week period for Christmas. Yeah, that is when you put up. As far as I'm aware, especially when I was a kid, that was always the case. Yeah. And I remember as I remember once at primary school, someone saying they'd put their tree up at the first December. It was very much like, "Whoa, what are you doing? Yeah, that's too early." Mm. But now that's acceptable. But yeah, mid December, you know that window between what the eleventh and the sixteenth, yeah, something like that. Yeah, like, usually a weekend. But yeah, round about yeah. when you've got you, you've, you've got a decent two week period up until because then you just enjoy it better. Yeah, exactly. And it just feels too early. And I'm sorry, I don't give a shit about COVID <laughs> and 2020, right? I bet, right? I bet you as well. All these, firstly, right? Half of the pictures that I see that have been put on Facebook about their tree going up earlier, it's like, oh, we've had a bad year, whatever, right? You look at the tree and you think, I want to put that up, love. <laughs> I won't be bragging about that. But anyway, secondly, I bet you they're the first to complain that when Easter eggs come out, 1st of January. Right, I've made this point. Yes. Why is it- why is it acceptable to put your tree up in mid-November, but not in January for Easter eggs? They will, I guarantee you they'll all mourn that, oh, yeah. it's getting out earlier and earlier. Yeah, well, your tree was up since September. <laughs> and it's. I think it's this year. Look, I, I can I can understand to an extent the arguments that people are making about lockdown mm-hmm. and people being alone and perhaps it, it, you know, it will make people happier. But I do think Facebook... And this FOMO attitude. Yes, I think one hundred percent. I think if it wasn't for the amount of people that are putting it on Facebook, yeah, people wouldn't think that. They're, oh, well, if they're doing it, we're doing it. Oh, yeah, exactly. I t- exactly. totally agree with that. Exactly. It's very much this kind of one person's done it. Oh, hang on, they've done it. I better do mine. I don't. Do, I want to put my picture on Facebook yeah. of my tree, and then that just starts a spiral. And I think I, I just wonder whether this year will this be an exception. Because I hope of lockdown, so. or will this? Because there is every argument to say that this could, this has got earlier and earlier over the years. Yeah, 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 now. yeah, yeah. There's every argument to say that next year or the next three or four years, it could get to the start of November. It could be Halloween but, and be like, right, tomorrow, Christmas tree. But what? I just it ruin like if you do it for two weeks, as we've said, right? That yeah. creates some sort of magical. It's Christmas, yeah. so it's getting excited. It's nearly there. You put it up middle of November. You've got six weeks to wait. Like, <laughs> and I know if that was us here, after two weeks, we're like, oh, gonna turn on tr- lights again. Bloody hell, gonna turn them off again. Oh, and if if you put your tree up, let's say mid November, will you be taking your tree down on Boxing Day, or will you be cake keeping up until the start of January? Or the, uh, oh, who knows what's going to happen this year? Because <laughs> they probably want to drag it out for as long as possible. Just keep it up, leave it on all year. No, I, 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 you know, people with young kids or whatever, I, I get that when you put it up, when you, so anyone that has put it up so far, right, you can put some Christmas music on, drink some alcohol, chocolates, 
put the tree up and you get excited. Yeah. Kids especially yeah, will get yeah, excited. Yeah, yeah. Totally. But genu- right. But then again, six weeks down the line, is it not? Are they going to be like, it, yeah, Santa, yeah. Has, are you coming yet? <laughs> what, it, but I think it just doesn't like create this, a ma- for me. Yeah. It just doesn't seem as magical as it should as it should be. Because remember, only maybe about a few years ago, people used to complain that the Christmas stuff was going up in the shops yeah. in September. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But because again, I think things like Netflix putting Christmas films on. Yeah, at the start of November, and then getting Christmas twenty four, which when Catherine's saying like in uh, mid October, oh Christmas twenty four is this film. Why? I any- I don't mind. Uh, depends. I don't mind Christmas films. Right, I think we're going to get onto that question in another episode, the next one. Um, because I mean, I'll listen not all Christmas music. Hmm. I would be happy to listen to Bublé's Christmas album in July. But that's but that's to be fair. That's only because of his sexy Canadian tones. Okay, okay. Um, not because I'm like, oh, when I get in the Christmas, because he sings them so well. Like I've never heard Jingle Bells sung like that way in, in my life. <laughs> it does something to me, David. Um, are you a artificial tree or a real tree? Ideally, we're real trees. We're yeah. a real tree, but we've got two cats that love to. Okay, to knock yep, crap over. So the first year that we had the the cats, there were kittens. We put stuff. We we couldn't put. We bought the bought the real tree, but we couldn't put anything on it because they were just climbing all over it. Yeah. So okay. the year after, we had to get a garden. I mean, it looked beautiful, but we had to get one like a white LED one that's meant to be for garden. We yeah, brought yeah, that yeah. in. Looked beautiful, but we couldn't mm. risk it. We couldn't risk getting another real one, and we don't know what we're gonna do this year because ideally, with it being Ivy's first Christmas. Yeah, we do. You know, you know. Looking back at the photos, we want a real one or whatever. But it's like our cats. We just don't know what to do with them. I, I remember people always say what one of the reasons why they don't have an artificial. Well, they have an artificial tree, so they hate the needles falling off. Well, just hoover them up. Yes, That's all you have to do. <laughs> yes, they're not doing anything to you. They're not like stabbing you. <laughs> if you don't, if you don't, if you don't know that hoovering is the trick to pick something up. <laughs> Then I worry about the rest of the state of your house. Do you do you find that when you go you go to get a real tree from garden centre? You, traditionally, you just like a garden centre. Mm-hmm. You go to although no, IKEA seems to be the place to go to. Really, a real tree for a real do, tree? Yeah, for a real tree because I do this thing for a few years now. Is where it you flat can get pack? a real tree. You would hope so, wouldn't you? <laughs> They're with instructions. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> um, but they they've done this thing for a few years now where you get a tree for twenty five quid, where you get a. I think you get a £10 voucher as well. Okay. So the idea is obviously you go get your tree, you're like, oh, well, I've got a voucher, we might as well go around mm-hmm. Ikea and spend stupid amounts and you just get nothing off, basically, sure. with your £10. Oh, yeah, okay, so you go get your tree, so you've got all your trees laid out, you look at your trees. What I always find funny is that technically all the trees look the same. Right. But when you get the tree out to look at it, oh, no, I'm not sure about that one. No, oh, I'm not sure about the side of that one. Totally. Do you, like I know you are looking for a certain tree, but ultimately they are all the same yeah. tree. The, and you have the amount of people that, half a, that laugh at us. So yeah. when we when we've been in the past, I would literally pull one up, yeah, pull another one up, and I'm stood there holding them, <laughs> and she's walking back going, I don't know, because this got that, but that's got this. I'm like, just fucking, yeah. just fucking pick one. <laughs> They're getting heavy. But that I go through that transition though. Initially, I'm a bit like I'm a picky, and then it gets to a point you're like, you've seen two or three which are fine. No, no, just that's fine. Yeah. Please, just go for that. And it's those years when you do get lucky and you pick one straight away. Yeah, you're there for like five minutes. That one, yeah, great, thank you. But it's when when you're well, there. For what's like, that like, David? Please tell me. <laughs> I've had that a couple of times, and it's the greatest feeling <laughs> of all time. You turn up. Let's have a look at that tree. Yeah, that's the one. Don't bother. Nope, there's no other trees oh, over that's there. That's the Don't dream. Look. But yeah, you can get into like twenty minute, half an hour rows, can't you? Sometimes. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. We've yeah, we've full on. Yeah. yeah. And arguments. Don't drop it like that. <laughs> but we're not going to get it. But we might do. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> because you've still got the thing. If you bring it home, you've got to maybe cut some leaves off anyway. Branches, sorry. Yeah, get, get them, branches getting off. it in the house is always uh, is always a bit of a of a risque situation. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> Get it in, get it round the corner. Oh, yeah. you've broken that. Look at all the uh, the leaves on the floor. <laughs> and How even if, when you them up? The, 
even when you cut the branches, you were always conscious about not cutting too much off. So yeah. it looks then you look like you've you've got the tree in a worse state. Do you let Do you that. let yours sit for a day? We we put ours well put ours in the little red basket thing. Yes, and then we'll let it sit for twenty four hours, and then she. Um, let's be honest, Lulu Lucy will then <laughs> decorate, and I'll be like, "Yeah, that was good, love." Yeah. I think maybe before the girls we did that. Right, okay. But now it's got to be very much like either get it, get the tree decorated overnight mm-hmm. so you don't have this tree hanging there yep. randomly or at least get it decorated so the eldest one who will appreciate it mm-hmm. can start decorating. But yeah, I think beforehand to do that. Otherwise, you buy it early, keep it in the net in the utility room for a couple of days out of the way. Have... Um... Because of the bandwagon that everyone seems to be on, has the, have the girls asked for the decorations of the tree earlier? Look, luckily not. Right, okay. And also, because we are in the middle of a house move, yep. I'm in a very great position where I can easily make the argument <laughs> about not putting anything up yet. Because obviously we haven't got a date for moving yet, and it could be we could be here for Christmas, we could be in a different house sure. for Christmas. But we're in a very weird limbo situation where I don't want to say let's put something up yeah. because... It could be like, well, we're moving mm. tomorrow. I know that won't happen. So, but yeah, so I'm, I've got away with it so far. I think once we start again in December, once schools start doing more, yeah, I think Mary will be a bit more like, can we do something? Mm. We have got like a tiny tree we can put up. Okay, and um, I might put that up just to satisfy <laughs> that need for a bit. Uh, to be fair, but, well, yeah. to be fair, she, well, she hasn't got Facebook, has she? Otherwise, <laughs> yeah. I'm sure she'd be like, Daddy, everyone else is doing it. <laughs> Do you want do you want to know the traditions of Christmas, where it all came from, and actually what date you should put your tree up? Yeah, I mean, yeah. If it backs up our argument, yeah, then yeah, I do. <laughs> okay, get ready for this, Mike, because I did some googling and I was shocked. Okay, shocked then. to my core. Okay, so the original tradition is the twelve days of Christmas, mm-hmm. so it's twelve days beforehand and after. So actually, technically, it should be Christmas Eve, which is far too late. Yeah, to put your tree up, and then it should go up until the sixth of January. I, okay. Uh, Catherine's very much like keeping it to the sixth. I'm not. I think that I think you're pushing it too far. So yeah. As, like, I think once Boxing Day's, I mean, you once Boxing Day's gone with it's like, oh right. Yeah. I think my dad, my dad as a kid grown up was very much like that. I think he allowed it to carry on till New Year's Day. Uh, yeah. But I, I'd you've wake you've up got to morning. keep it up for New Year's. Yeah. I'd wake up in the morning on New Year's Day and the tree was gone and it was like, oh, and I do think. That is one of the saddest things in the world when you have to take that tree down, and there's this empty space. I once, um, I don't know if you saw it, remember it, or whatever. Um, back in the day when I lived at my mum's, um, because everyone puts their tree up on Facebook, I t- I tried to start a new trend and took a photo of the tree gone, and took a photo <laughs> of the space where the tree was, and was like, "Tree's gone. <laughs> Look at this." Do you not find it weird that when the tree's gone, the room feels weird? Yeah, it feels like, bigger. You, you, yeah, but you've had the same space for yeah. like nearly a year. <laughs> uh, okay, so true so traditions are 12 days. Um, some people do it on the 6th of December because that's St. Nicholas's Day, St. Nicholas day I can, which I've never heard of. Can I, I, again, start of December, I can, I can, ex- I can yeah. accept it. So I can get that. But this is the shock horror. Um, you're supposed to, well, one of the traditions is you put your tree up on the fourth Sunday before Christmas, which is the start of Advent. Right. Right. So this year, that was the 29th of November. Sack off. So technically, people who put their tree up Sunday, yesterday to our recording, got to, were allowed to, to do that. And they can easily make that argument, which made me feel sick to the core <laughs> when I read that. <laughs> Um, do you want to know also where it came from, Christmas trees? The idea of being in the house. B and Q is one place, yeah, that's where it came cool. from. But it also started in uh, the 1600s in Germany. They started the tradition of putting your tree inside the house. And in the UK, it came about in the mainly about the 1700s, but popular with Prince Albert and Queen Victoria, who did it. And they made it kind of more popular in the UK uh, by doing it in 1790. So a bit of history. Oh, factoid. look at you. For you there. Um, that was me writing that while watching the Villa um, Leicester game. Not Villa Leicester game, Villa West Ham game. Oh, okay. At the same time. What's, what uh, did that finish, by the way? Uh, last time I checked, it was 2 1 to West Ham. I know Villa had missed a penalty. Oh, I've got Martinez in my fantasy football team. 
Uh, I was hoping for a draw for that result, just for the early table standings for Wolves. I wanted, but I didn't know. No, no, finished two one. Uh, okay, damn it. That's right. Wolves are seventh. I'll take that. Um, anyway, so Christmas trees. We are saying then, when should you put your Christmas tree up? On our advice, do not put it up <laughs> until middle of December. Yeah. If you put it up now, we do not accept your lockdown excuse. <laughs> You've got it all from FOMO. I'd be interested if anyone's willing to tweet us whatever comment and say, yeah, we've ended up putting up our Christmas tree up because other people have started to put them up quite early. Yeah. I'd be interested just, to see if anybody would say that. Just be brave. Just admit it. There's no judgment here. We don't, and we, won't have to, we don't have to see a name no. if you don't want to. We can. It's going to send a video in with their like their pixelated face with their blood. <laughs> yes, I was that person who did this. <laughs> oh, but yeah, okay. We're saying mid December, put your tree up, um, and then you can feel the Christmas magic. Yes. Right, Christmas tree is done. I'm look. I've been trying to get it off my chest for quite a while because <laughs> it's been annoying the heck out of me. I think that might have been the first question we suggested when we said do the Christmas episode. Yes. We were like. Yeah, Christmas trees, far too early. And you're like, yes, I agree with you. We'll do that, definitely. <laughs> right, on to next question then. Uh, Michael, one of the big traditions at Christmas, the lazy traditions of Christmas, is chocolate and getting your traditional big bucket of chocolate. That could be your roses, your quality street, your heroes, etc. Uh, but the next question I want to know, Mike, is how many of said chocolates of those tubs is it acceptable to eat in one sitting? So you've got your tub of preferred chocolate tub. You've got it in front of you. How much of it is it acceptable to eat in one go? Depends where I am. I think you've right. got to think of etiquette. Okay. Um, but a lot of my notes here just starts with depends. <laughs> depends, depends, depends. So if I was if if we'd um, bought, a, bought a box, a pack, whatever you want to call it, a tub, yeah. um, I'd have no problem grabbing... 10 and then just sitting in front of the TV and eating them. Okay. Um, that I'd be no issue with that. 10 in one sitting, and I'd probably go back for seconds. But for one sitting, <laughs> I'd be fine with having 10. Okay. If it was at my mum's gaff, I'd probably, I'd probably go up more times, but in smaller. So I might get four or five each time. Okay. But go up. Three times, you make it a bit more covert this yeah. time. Put a bit, put a bit of camouflage. Anyone want a drink? On. They won't... Anyone want a drink? Yeah. Drink anyone? Drink. <laughs> oh look, at, we're going to go to VAR. Have you seen there? He's <laughs> just put his hand in the roses. That's clever there from my. Okay, um, yeah. But if I was at the in-laws, it'll be one max two per hour, I think. And maybe you would probably take more if they off if it was going around and they offered it to you. Otherwise, oh no, I'd no, were... I'd I'd take less. I'd definitely ju- only take one. So if if uh, okay. so if um if my mother in law went round and was like, "Do you want a chocolate? Do you want a chocolate?" I'd only take one because okay, I'd, I'd, I'd don't I'd feel like in front of them. <laughs> Although in her head, she probably thinks. Why are you only taking one? You you know you want more yes. than one. Yes. And Lucy will probably say, Michael, what are you doing? Just just take what you want. It's fine. Would you like a chocolate? Yeah, go on then. Just <laughs> grab your hand in there. I'll have that. Thank you. You've you've got more tubs, haven't you? I'll just I'll just have this one. <laughs> you see, all, all you've put there, I hadn't thought of that in terms of being with other people. A lot of mine have come to if I was on my own. Right. <laughs> in that scenario. So mine depends on um Firstly, it depends on if you are leave, purposely leaving any of those chocolates out. Say that again. If, it depends on if you're leaving any of those chocolates out. So there's going to be certain chocolates in that tub that you don't like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you are almost rationing straight away the amount that you're going to have out of all that tub. Right. Uh, I've also got, uh, it depends on the size of the box. Okay, then. Uh, and also depends on... Right, so I've put here, it depends on if I'm transfixed by something. So it's Christmas Day or it's a couple of days later. I'm lying on the sofa watching a film and I've got the box there. And I think sometimes you can start having one and then another. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then another and then sooner or later. And because it's Christmas, everybody's like, oh, it's Christmas. I'll just have another one. I think you could easily, if you're not, not say careful, if you're not wary, go through a whole. Yeah. Well, that, that, what was it, two episodes ago, I think, when I said we've got heroes. 
and I was eating some, I'd, I think I had three in the space of a couple of minutes and I thought, no shit, I need to stop this because <laughs> I'm doing a podcast. I can't just keep <laughs> rustling and eating chocolates while I'm talking to David. But, but totally, if you're just like, oh, I'm going to watch a film, let's get some chocolates and you just sit there, yeah. I could probably do the tub. I would genuinely yeah, I, do the tub. I think so. I think if someone gave me a Terry's chocolate orange and just opened it up. 100%. I think if I was watching a film, I'd easily go through all that. I remember once at work a few years ago, I was sitting on a desk and opposite me was like a director of a department and she was eating some Percy pigs. Now, Percy pigs are my like kryptonite. You give me Percy pigs, I'm going to devour them okay. all. Yeah. So she had a couple of, she had a pack of Percy pigs. She was like, oh, David, you want a Percy pig? Oh, yeah, thank you, Will. Thank you. So I had this Percy pig. And then she said, um, oh, I've got to go to a meeting. But, if, you know, if you want another one, help yourself. All right, okay, thank you. So you just go, like, oh, okay, I'll have one. And then I had that kind of, uh-oh, <laughs> moment. And then uh, literally it was about 15 minutes later when I came back. She came back and I ate the whole pack. <laughs> <laughs> she was like, where have they gone? And I was like, um, well, this raccoon came in. <laughs> but, yeah, so Percy Pig's kryptonite for me. Easily. Just chocolate. Those. Yeah. Like if it, but... So celebrations, I would make sure I get all the Malteser teasers. In Heroes, <laughs> yeah. um, the oh, what 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 do they call them? The Dinky Decker, the small du- double decker. Uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, I could I could easily just pick all of them out and just scoff them. I'm not a fan of the the deckers. Oh, they're my favourite chocolate bar, double uh, decker. I could have go for the uh, Dairy Milk, the Whispers. The twirls. Dairy milk for a second. Like yeah. I'd be, go for those. Also, twirl. Is that just a flake covered in chocolate? Oh, I think so. They've just cleverly marketed that, haven't they? Yeah. And you get two of them. <laughs> so why would you pick a flake over a twirl? How, uh, interestingly, actually, we, we put a, um, a, a question on Twitter earlier today about what would be the ideal flavour of sweet yep. that you would have. And you replied with it would be purple. Yes. How does that colour ratio come with chocolate? Because I know Cold oh, right. Street are by well, this is it. colours. You said you, it was sweet. So... Yeah, but no, no, I, this is leading to something else. Okay. But what would your colour preference be in terms of the chocolate wrapper? Oh, of a, so, a we, so we Street think box? of Quality Street then. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. I think orange, because I think you're safe with orange. Yeah. Orange, hundred percent, and this leads me why. Because somebody, Quality Street was trending today on Twitter. Oh, really? And a lot of it was to do this one particular tweet from Stephen Hull. Oh, who, I think I might have seen this. So I'm going to read it out to everybody. Um, he says, "A bit of spare time on my hands today, so I audited an unopened Quality Street yeah, tin." And so what he's done, he's took a picture and he's perfectly lined up in colour order the amounts of different colour sweets. Right? Mm-hmm. Um, it's a great graphic. It is. Graphic. It is. And he he said this just four pur- pur- purples, just for four <laughs> purples. It's too late. Just for four blah, 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 blah. purples, four of them, four point seven percent, and yet a massive eleven orange ones, twelve point nine percent. And if you look at the the graph, yes, there is a lot of orange ones, and I would be easy going for the orange ones. Yeah, right away. I would. I don't. I wonder whether Quality Street have done some kind of research over the years. I found that people prefer the orange to the purples, well, so they put more orange in. Or the... no, see, I, I'd I'd think the other way. I'd think that they've done research and they think that they prefer purple, so they're not going to overload them with purples. Oh yes, they're just going to keep them back a bit and then be like, "Oh, we'll have to get another box," and then they can bring out a just purple box. Yes. And well, if you go, I think can is it John Lewis? You can create your own box, so you can go really? to quality. I'm sure. I'm sure you can. You can ask for whatever ones you want to go in your box, your tub. Okay, I'm not a Quality Street fan though. Like, if someone offers me it, I'll go for the orange because I know well, that's an orange flavour. I still eat I don't it. Think I'm, I don't think I'm touching anything else. I think for, I'd go tub of heroes, tub of celebrations. Quality, quality Street Roses. That would be my yes. top to bottom. I think Roses have gone down the pecking order a lot in years. I remember as a kid they were like top dog. Well, yeah, because like... when we were a kid, there was just Quality Street and Roses. Yes. That was it. And then when Celebrations came out, everyone was like, oh. <laughs> it was amazing. And then Heroes came out like a year or two years later, and it just blew the competition wide open. 
I think roses are may, maybe like the Portsmouth of, of sweets. They were <laughs> at one point really good. I'm trying to think of a better analogy. Maybe Leeds United, although the Leeds have come back now. Mm-hmm. They used to be top dog and then they really went down the, the pecking Nottingham order. Forest? Yeah. Because they were obviously like European champions, so that would be yeah, good. So not even, I was going to say Sunderland, but because they're in League One, they're really Yeah, like, they were never good. So, uh, yeah, Forest. I think I, I'll take the Forest one. Forest are the hit roses. Yeah. Forest are yeah, the hit roses of football. Mm. Okay, that's great. Okay, so how many of these sweets is acceptable to eat in one sitting? What are we saying then? Are we saying basically as many as you if want? You, if really? you're on your own and at home, then crack on. Like, no one's judging you. Um, but then you've just, you've just like, I, I was brought up better than to just steal the full tub at me and laws Like to be, I mean, to be fair now, it's six years and they probably will expect me to take the tub, but I was still that first instance, that first time they offered me, I was still going to take one. Yeah. And then after that, they were like, Mike, just eat what you want, mate. <laughs> would you like a chocolate? Yes, please take the whole tub. What you do? You- you just said, I want the, all the chocolate. You said, would you like I one? get, um, Lucy's mum makes me my own cheesecake on Christmas Day. Ooh, or Boxing nice. Day or, where, yeah, wherever I see see yeah. them. Because I don't like, I don't do Christmas um, pudding. So she'll make yes. my own uh, cheesecake and it's beautiful. It's absolutely yes. beautiful. I'm, I'm on the non-Christmas pudding bandwagon as well. Mm. I'm not a fan. Catherine loves it. So if we go to Catherine's parents for Christmas... They'll all. They've always done a Christmas pudding, right? And they'll always put a. Did you put like a coin? Yeah, in mim, yeah. My mum will always, and they will put brandy on it and then light it up. Yes, they always light it up. Like one year that me and Catherine were at my mum and dad's for Christmas, and they did this. Um, Catherine's dad put too much brandy on, and when he lit it, lit it, it burnt off the eyebrows. Brilliant, of Catherine's cousin. So we were like, oh, we missed it. How did we miss that? But uh, yeah, so but yeah, I'm always. I think they always put out like ice cream or like a, they get like a chocolate mm. cake or something for, for moi to devour. Afterwards. Oh yeah, my mum will always that. get me a cheesecake. Um, yeah. But yeah, just when she makes me one, it's like a triple chocolate Oreo oh. and it's like a big fat <laughs> one just for me. It's There's no better sight. <laughs> it's great. What's up for Christmas, Mike? You know what I want for Christmas. <laughs> Right, okay, so we've done that one. Right, it's time for listener questions, Michael. Cool. It's that time of the podcast, everybody, where we ask you for your questions. You can send them in by the usual channels. And to save Michael his words, here's how you do it. So those are the places to send your questions in. We did ask for Christmas Christmas I Christmas questions. We, we asked for your Christmas questions, and we're going to answer them now. <laughs> We asked for your Christmas questions uh, for this week. I think we got some. We, we've got we enough. We've got on. enough to fill the segment. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> any yeah, any okay. non Christmas questions? I've said next year. Okay. All right. Okay. So we save yeah. them. Yeah. Okay. We need to save them up. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, this is why I've plugged it so much because I said to <laughs> people like, "Yeah, I, I've always got backup questions because I've got weeks in it, like people have asked me questions in weeks in advance." Whereas now I'm starting from a scratch, so I need I can't I haven't got your backup <laughs> questions. I need some Christmas questions. Okay, let's do Christmas. And we've got some good ones. ones. Oh, what have the people said, Michael? So brackets Matt on Twitter mm-hmm. has said, "What is the fascination with eating turkey when it is clearly an inferior bird compared to the deliciousness of a roast chicken?" You see, there's something about Christmas and turkey. Like I don't think I'd necessarily eat a turkey any other time of the year unless you go out for like a Sunday dinner mm-hmm. and they've got turkey on the menu but can you get I mean I completely disagree with him by the way okay I don't think I think roast chicken is last on the pecking order again pecking order Peck. hey. it's last on the pecking order I, I think in terms of a Christmas dinner sorry or just in just, general like out of your meat so like your chicken your porks your beef your turkey. Yeah. It, I, I, I just I, think you just, it, it's too common, I think. I, mean, like I, th- that, I think that's what it is. I think it's so available and you would have it so regularly in other meals mm. or in fast food outlets that a turkey is like a treat. Yeah. It's well, like, that, it's and like and an elite I, And level. I think that's what it is. I think that's what the fascination, as he puts, is that because you only really eat it at Christmas. 
Yeah. And you only really I'm, I'm see very, it in yeah. the supermarkets at Christmas. I don't think I'd be happy if I had to have chicken as my main no. meat on Christmas Day. Has to be I'd turkey. be I mean, so look, disappointed. If it couldn't be turkey, but it had to be something like beef or something, yep. Yeah. Okay, I'd live with it, but not chicken. Yeah, I'd, I'd beef, yeah, fine. Pork, yeah, fine. I mean, ideally all three. But <laughs> if it was just the chicken, I yeah, could have gone no. KFC. Yeah, exactly. Going to be turkey. All right, Matt, sorry, Matt. It's, it's yeah, turkey you, the way. Yeah, you're wrong. I'm, sorry, brackets, Matt. <laughs> right, okay. Other ones. Next one, at Tobias Hog 2. Mm-hmm. How does Santa get in the homes that don't have chimneys? Oh, isn't the the whole thing you say now is that Santa's got a magic key that gets into the front door? Isn't that the thing? Well, I wondered that. Like, do you not just because I, I, we've always had a chimney, so I don't think my parents have and we won't this year have to worry about how Santa's going to get in the house. Mm-hmm. But I thought you just leave a key under the door, Matt. Yeah, but it's got to be a magic key, and you can't just leave him a key. Otherwise, you he p- can just come in the house anytime you want. So, do you post? Yeah, but it- sorry, love, I'm co- I'm, you left me a key. I'm coming around for a brew. So, so do we think he's got one key that fits all? I would say so. At a lot of shops, they sell these magic keys, don't they? Okay. That to say things. Oh, look, I've got the magic key for Santa. We'll leave it outside or whatever, and then he'll, you know, use it. But I would think if Santa, I mean, this is probably a question for another time, but Santa, you would think, would have a, a like a master key for every single lock. Uh, you would think so. World. Which begs the question, would it not just be easiest to just go through every single front <laughs> yeah. door rather than chancing to see if someone's got a chimney or not <laughs> and then risking getting stuck and getting his red suit dirty? Yeah. Just eat, sees a chimney. Oh, crap. For the chimney. <laughs> yeah. Aren't these all being decommissioned? Who uses a chimney now? <laughs> and it's in the chimney sweep for years. <laughs> um, yeah, I would say he has a magic key mm. and he must have a master key. And all these all these ones he sees that people leave out that people have bought from the shops, he's like, what the hell is this tat? Yeah. He throws it away. I'll use my proper one, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we're saying master key. Panther's got a magic master yeah. key. Um, and then the last one this week is from at Cage Fighting Pod. Our okay. buddies over there has asked <laughs> if you had to buy Nick Cage a Christmas present, what are you getting him? <laughs> oh, probably so. I don't. I feel really bad saying this, but I'm a big fan of Nick Cage. But I'm also not to a point where I could think of a real funny answer to back up the question. Right. So I feel like I'm already letting <laughs> them down. <laughs> By not doing it, it's good. Oh, I really don't know off the top of my head. I, I I've, really I've got, a, what would you I've go got one, but I don't know if they're going to like it. Okay. Um, but I'm seeing it with good intention. Yeah. A hair transplant. Because he's, he's he yeah. hasn't got those luscious locks like he used to. No. And not, I, not the, and not the head. You're thinking Nick Cage, I do anyway, you're thinking Nick Cage with long flowing hair, but with a full head of hair. Oh, like um, did Con Air, for in, example. Um, Con Air, that's it, Con Air. He had and his I, lovely blonde hair. Yeah, I hair. can't remember if he had a, if he was receding a bit then. But and like to be fair, like what man who's going bald would not accept a hair transplant? Like if someone <laughs> get, if someone wanted to give me one, I would snap their hand off. Oh, well, no, actually, no. I do know what I'd get him. I'd get him a face mask. Oh, oh, to tie into a face off. <laughs> One of the greatest Nick Cage films what, ever. Just John Travolta fa- um, lips and nose on the face mask. Uh, no, what would it work? You know, one of the face masks, like the beauty face masks. Oh right, I thought you meant the COVID face masks. Oh, you could do that actually, and you could say I couldn't want to yeah. take his face, and then just off. get John Travolta's bottom half of a face. <laughs> okay, that's what we're saying. Then we're saying uh, a hair transplant and a COVID face and- mask. And a John Travolta inspired COVID <laughs> face mask. Um, I th- there was a question on the email yeah, as well. Yeah, but I'm but, going to save that for next week. But if we use week, it, and all, but it contradicts th- one of the questions that we've just said. Okay, well let's save it for next week then. So, okay. so we I might think have to put a, a warning. Okay, I think that will be a tough one to discuss as well. Yeah, but we will yeah. we will discuss it. I think it's only right. Yeah, no, I think we will. But we just need to put a, a warning out for. Parents. Okay. 
Uh, right, so is that listener questions done uh, for this week? It week's? is indeed. Let's move on to surprise question. Michael. Oh, you're smiling already, and I don't know if I like this. <laughs> it's time for surprise question. It's part of the podcast where Michael and I will ask each other a question right off the cuff. It hasn't been pre-planned. We don't know what we're being asked, and we probably don't know what we're going to answer. But this week, it is my turn for surprise question. And of course, it's got to be a Christmas-themed surprise question so michael here is my surprise question for you now i've made it food related <laughs> to uh, to keep it in theme and it is christmas food related right okay michael i'm gonna give you a scenario to start the question off it's christmas day you've got all the trimmings on your sunday dinner but what's that you haven't got any pigs in blanket right it's a travesty no pigs in blanket but you've been able to find some spare cocktail sausages to use, or, you know, little chip sausages, yep. we'll say. But you want to recreate, and everybody around the table who's allowed to on Christmas Day wants to recreate pigs in blankets, right? Mm-hmm. You've got no meat you can use. So what non-meat would you wrap around those sausages in order to replace the bacon to make your own pigs in blankets? <sighs> so no meats are available. No bacon, nothing like that. You've got to wrap around a non-meat food. It could be anything, anything you like, to make your own version of Piggy's Blanket. Sliced cheese. <laughs> of course. <laughs> of course you would. <laughs> what What would you go for, like a plain cheese or a certain start, like a taste of cheese? Well, the, the one I'm thinking of straight away is your typical burger sliced cheese because that's easy to just wrap around <laughs> i don't know if yeah, you can get yeah. many different flavors of that one okay let's say that any cheese in the world was easily right okay then it would be applewood oh yes that's a good one okay so why did i not think that you were going to say cheese <laughs> <laughs> so ideally on your plate you've got your, your all your trimmings you've got your gravy as well You've also got your your burger sliced cheese around <laughs> around a little cocktail chipolate <laughs> sausage. What would you call that then? It couldn't be pigs in blanket. Would um, you call it cheese in cheese in blanket? It's got to be a a, a good. No, because the pig is the sausage. Yeah, in a blanket, so it would be. But uh, also, yeah, but the yeah. So what would it be? Someone come up with a quip for us to use. Pig in. Pig in a quilt. Pig in a quilt. <laughs> and we also implore people to try that out on Christmas Day. And if the opportunity is there for me to try that, <laughs> Christmas Day, Boxing Day, whatever, then I, I will I will do it. Okay. We want pe- If people will do it, as well as Michael, we want people to tell us what they thought. Was it horrible or was it a ten- taste sensation? Are the, are the cocktail today. sausages hot or cold? I think the sausage has got to be warm for it to work. Right, because I don't know if I've ever had a, a warm chipolate sausage. Wouldn't pigs in blanket be warm? Though? Yeah, yeah, but yeah, yeah, yeah. So right, so you you were saying the actual so, the actual sausage that it comes in, not your typical Tesco thirty mini sausage cocktail things that you get for picnics. <laughs> yeah, no, yeah, the actual right, sausage okay. that it comes in. Yeah, well, yeah. even better if it melts onto okay. it. <laughs> Okay, so we're saying then um, cheese. Cheese around your sausage. Cheese around. <laughs> cheese around And that's why sausage. I should do an OnlyFans account. <laughs> right, okay. It's time to get to the last question of this part one of the Christmas ADQ. Michael, Advent Calendars. Um, hopefully by the time people have listened to this, it should be officially the first day of them opening said calendar whether it's a chocolate variety or all the new varieties you can get. But my question to you, Michael, is should there be an age limit to when you have a chocolate advent calendar? No. Yes, thank you. Why? Like, it's chocolate. Why? Yes. Who says, who says no to chocolate in any sort of capacity? Who doesn't want to wake up first thing in the morning and be like, you know what, I'm going to have a bit of chocolate? Yeah, before I go off to work or whatever. I'm I'm all for it. I've still I've got one upstairs ready for tomorrow. But I, but I'm as a ready. kid, I've got three of my advent calendars this year of chocolate. <laughs> you so as a kid you had three. No, 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 no. Now you've like, got no three. I was just saying. So I've three of mine now. 
a chocolate. Right. You've got three advent calendars. No, I've got four, but three of them are chocolate. <laughs> right, so explain. So I've got my one advent calendar, which, in fairness, will likely then be substituted to the girls every morning. Oh, really? I'm not lucky. Um, so how have you procured three, technically four? Let's say the chocolate ones. How have you procured three advent calendars for yourself? So two of the chocolate ones, um, one from Ivy, one from Lucy. Okay, yeah. Um, and then the other one is from the mother-in-law. Look at you, hey! Look at you. Um, yeah. Some of us only got one. You know, someone's got to live in this poor town <laughs> of one advent calendar. So some of us live it up in life for the the three. <laughs> one's a Malteser one. One's yeah. the new dairy. The, the new, I think it's a new dairy milk where it's milk chocolate caramel or whole nut piece. Oh right, okay. Um, and the other one, which I'm looking forward to actually. Is from Marks and Spencer's. Mm. On Christmas Day, you get a, you get a can of beer, but the twenty four days chocolate is beer flavored caramel. I think inside them. Oh, okay. Mm. So, are you are you fine with the chocolates being different varieties, or are you straight? It just going to be a plain chocolate for every day. Do you not mind? As long as I'm getting chocolate. Like last, <laughs> last, oh, last, David, last year, I said, let me tell you, let me tell you about this last year. <laughs> okay. So last year I got a Celebrations one. Right, um, yeah. One of my chocolate ones was Celebrations, one of Lucy. And the first two were Bounties. And I think, oh. and it, like on uh, Radio 1 um, in the morning, um, Twitter all kicked off. It was trending. Everyone I, think, was, I, I yeah. think I remember this, yeah. And I joined in on that. Um, so anyway, as the days went on, I opened another window and it was a bounty. So I wasn't happy. Second day, bounty. Third day, bounty. I was like, what the hell's going on here? So I tweet, I'm tweeting <laughs> Nestle in celebrations, like, <laughs> what's going on here? Fourth day, bounty. So, what? so we'd met up with some friends and I'm telling this story. I'm like, I can't believe it. I've tweeted him. I've done this. I've done that. And then Lucy's laughing behind my back. I was like, what are you laughing at? She was like, I did it. I filled, all, I filled them all with bounties. <laughs> I've, t- I've taken all the chocolates and I filled them all with bounties. I was like, you bitch. I was going to say, as you were telling this story, I was like, oh, I was joking. going to say, I bet you someone's refilled them. Fair play, Lulu. Fair play. Well done. Oh. Oh. Are you back. I'm back, sorry. Right. I think I pressed a button on my keyboard. Anyway, I'll say fair play, Lulu. Fair play. Yeah, yeah, fair play, Lulu. Fair play. <laughs> um, I've got a... I always go for every year, just your sta- bog standard Cadbury's Dairy Milk. She's looking now and laughing, by the way. She can, she's she's standing <laughs> at the door <laughs> laughing at that story. <laughs> Tell her I pass my congratulations on. David for, uh... passes on his congratulations for that little incident. <laughs> Thank you very much, she says. <laughs> oh, st- oh, great. Stand by for this year's prank, she's just said. <laughs> um, oh, well, you need to report on that then next week, yeah, potentially, yeah. if it happens by then. Um, yeah, so I always go for bogs under dairy milk every year. Because yep. I just can't, you know, dairy milk, good. But this year, I've gone for the Lindor one. Ah, okay. L- Lucy's got that one. Because a lot, of, I think it was an offer everywhere. Oh, okay then. And it was a thicker, a thicker um, advent calendar. Variation of chocolates. I think sometimes you get a bunny and maybe you got a Santa at the end. I'm thinking, yeah, go on then. I'll I'll buy into this. Yeah, it's locked down. Yeah, yeah. I'll treat myself. So I've gone for that this year. But I know that, as I say, most of those will be gone for not for me. Do, but do, in the they, they've got their own advent calendar, surely. They've got their own. But sometimes when you are trying to bargaining your children to do things you need them to do, right, okay, <laughs> saying, then. oh, I've got a, a chocolate here you can have if you do this, always helps. Ivy's got a chocolate one. Okay. She and unfortunately she'll be you know, she's just turned seven months, so she's in no position to eat chocolate advent calendars, so mummy and daddy will have to eat it for her. <laughs> Where do you stand on now the advent calendars of non chocolates you get? Well, now? this is the fourth advent calendar, David. Okay. Yeah. The fourth one, but bought as a present from Lucy. Mm-hmm. Whiskey. Ooh, okay. I was and I've, again, so last two years, I got um, beer ones. 
Mm-hmm. And this year I saw that uh, Brewdog were doing an advent calendar. Yeah. So I dropped a couple of hints to say, oh, Brewdog's got an advent calendar out or whatever. And I, I was texting one mate in particular saying, yeah, I'm hoping I'll, he, he sent me, he sent me the picture. And I was like, yeah, I've, I've dropped the hint. I'm hoping to get it. Then he texts me saying, yeah, I've got mine of you. I was like, no, not yet. Probably won't get it until November. Um, <laughs> and he keeps asking, have you got it? Have you got it? No, I haven't got it. Yet. I haven't got it yet. And then, yeah. And then she was, and then last week or whatever, she pulled out and she was like, I've got you this whiskey one instead. This whiskey one. I was like, happy days. Delighted. Buzzing. <laughs> But she was like, but you've got it because I couldn't get the Brewdog one. <laughs> oh. And then she said, um, and you're only getting it really because it's a year, it's been a year to celebrate. Which I looked at and said, but I didn't think you supported Liverpool. <laughs> and apparently that was the wrong answer. Apparently it's because of Ivy. <laughs> uh, what, so how, what size are these whiskeys in? Like, uh, it's, yeah, so it's like mi- miniature. Um, I'm not too sure how much you get in them. Um, I imagine it's a single. Um, but I will let you know tomorrow. Good. Um, <laughs> I, th- yeah, I think it, I, I can only imagine it's a, a single measure, but yeah, I'm looking forward to it. Looking forward to it. I remember when I was in sixth form, the, um, we had a German exchange student come for the year. All right. Uh, really nice guy. He wasn't your typical German exchange student in the fact that he was actually quite cool. <laughs> but he was only there for a year. Like, he was a really good-looking oh, okay, cool guy. And I, some reason, was quite good friends with him. And I remember thinking, how am I good friends with you? This doesn't make any sense. Right. Why do you want to be friends with me? Anyway, really great guy. But I remember him telling me that his uh, advent calendar for that year was a Kinder Egg one. Right. He got a Kinder Egg behind every window. As if... And I was like, "That's like the in some ways, that's the ultimate chocolate." That is, that is a thought. yeah, because you get a toy as well. <laughs> yeah. Um, is there any kind of advent calendar you think is the ultimate? Talking about that, and it doesn't have to be chocolate. What you know? Would you say the whiskey one you've got is the well, ultimate? Well, I mean, I, I have, I have wanted a whiskey. Like you, you see the whiskey ones and think, "Yeah, I'd love to have a whiskey one." Um, so that's like pretty high up for me. Um, how about like a meat one where it's already cooked for you and it's warm? Yeah, but um, I mean, if, if that's logistically possible, <laughs> yeah. if they just give you a, like a, a brand new steak behind every every yeah. door, then that's that's great. Um, Someone's constructed like a massive barbecue with doors on it <laughs> and the barbecues are, are roasting 24-7. There's just, there's the just one guy. <laughs> yeah. To the point where it's not over, like it hasn't burnt all the food to a crisp, but you can just open up like a, a big metal door and there is the meat for you to have for the day. Yeah. I think logistically someone could do that. We've, you know, science, we've, we've needed, we've basically come up with the vaccine within a year. Someone can do that. <laughs> <laughs> once the, once this is gone with, let's put all our resources to proper use now. Mm. Let's let's go make this meat advent calendar. Lucy's got um a paper chase one. And a um, a makeup one. I don't buy into these makeup ones. I just think that's a great way to make money for people. Well, apparently, mm. you get more for your money. Okay. So it, it's like you you spend this, but you get this amount of product. Um. So apparently, you get like I I, I can't remember about the Brewdog one. I think you might be getting. With the Brewdog one, I think it was like 50 quid. So for 24 mm. mixed cans, yeah. I think it works out to be quite yeah. cheap um, or cheaper than you would normally. But your makeup one, that's going to sometimes, depends on where you get it from, but that's probably going to set you back a bit, I would have thought, depending on the quality of makeup well, you've got. Yeah, it was, I could, I could only afford a 12 day one. <laughs> <laughs> so she's got you... she's got a 24 paper chase one and she's got a chocolate yeah. one, but I was like, I've got you this as well, but I've only, I can only afford 12 days. <laughs> I got it. I chopped it in half and said, <laughs> can I have that one, please? Yeah. Uh, okay. So we're saying then, is there an appropriate age to stop having a chocolate no. having calendars? No. You have it for as long but as, as you As a kid, want. I did think, because I never saw my parents with a chocolate advent calendar. So as a kid, I always thought, oh, do I, do you just not have advent calendars as, as an adult? Yeah. Uh, maybe we will suddenly get to an age where we decide it's not for us. I hope and not. I, I, and that's when I do not want that day to come. Maybe it's a traditional thing. Like, would 
when I should have Googled this, but when did chocolate advent calendars actually become a thing? Should we Google it now? In the UK. You Google it now, we've tell us time. because I because presu- I would presume that our parents wouldn't have had it. It would have been just a traditional just paper and or cardboard and you just see a picture and you're like, Oh, that's nice. Anyway, what do I do for the rest of the day? I didn't listen to a word of that, David. I'll be completely honest with you. I have no <laughs> idea what he said. <laughs> I was saying that you know when you're, I'm not going to bother. Yeah, lovely. Again. Okay, I'll, I'll listen to I'll listen back to the podcast. Um, right, okay. So Google tells me okay. the first chocolate advent calendar appeared in 1958, but it was in 1971 that Cadbury joined the race and launched its own version in the UK. Cadbury produced advent calendars intermittently from 1972 to 1986, but it wasn't until 1993 that they finally became mainstream. Mainstream. Okay. And that was when we were kids, really. That's so it's our generation, really, that benefits. I think from so. Yeah, about sounds of it, because I, I was born in nineteen eighty six. So we will be part of the generation that will be the first adults that will keep that tradition on from childhood to adulthood. Yeah, I would have thought. So yeah, if you've got an advent calendar, I know it's slightly contradictory to the Christmas tree argument, but you do what you want. You well, have that first December, calendar. like that's when yeah. advent calendars start. Do you? I know you've got that advent calendar with the beer one where you get something on the 25th. Yes. But are you a traditionalist in terms of it's got to end on the 24th? Or do you mind? No, I'd, ra- I'd, wa- I'd want the extra day. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure as a kid, I got advent calendars, chocolate advent calendars that went up to 25 days. I'm convinced I, am- I did. Yeah, I, I remember having one one year that went up to New Year's Day. Really? And even as a kid, I thought, now that's a bit far. Did you? Yeah, I know I'm getting more chocolate here, but it felt wrong after after 24th. I'd no, I'd rather 25 days if if yeah. if we could. If if yeah, why not? <laughs> if if we could, write to the manufacturers, <laughs> please may you make all of them. Why 25 why just days, stop on please. Christmas Eve? You want a chocolate with your presents? Yeah, that's true. That's true. Okay. I think that is all the questions for this week, Mike, for part one of our double build great, of AD. Great episode. Christmas. It's been absolutely great. Next week, it's not only another Christmas episode, it's the last episode of series one <gasps> of ADQ. Da, da, da. Uh, so please make sure you get your quest- questions. 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 <laughs> Christmas questions. <laughs> make sure you get your questions in uh, to the usual channels. And by the power of editing, here's how you can do it. Thank you, Michael, for reading that out on you uh, just Absolute now. Absolute pleasure. Um, we're still looking for a sponsor, by the way. If anyone, probably yeah. now for the second series, but if yeah. anybody wants to sponsor us, you're more than welcome to. Please get in touch in the usual usual channels. Ch- channels. <laughs> usual channels. The usual <laughs> channels. The curse through Zoom. Mm. It carries on. Uh, yeah, there must be some kind of sponsor, some local company, you know, window glazing. Just you know, just to say that you sponsor something, you know, if you say I sponsor a podcast, it just sounds quite. Hip, yeah, of doesn't course it, it does. Yeah, I, you know, just you know, I might put the feelers out on LinkedIn. Do that and just see who you can get. Get some kind of recruiter sponsored by HM Recruiting. Yeah. I know a couple of recruiters actually from my previous job. I might just speak to them. See if we can get <laughs> see if we can get some money rolling in, David. Can you uh, show me what the listening figures are? Oh, yeah, they're there. Um, can you just move your hand away from the <laughs> other numbers? Uh, no, you don't need to see that. You don't need to see that. Um, yeah, so sponsors, if you want to get in touch, let us know. We'll uh, we'll happily take your money or gifts. <laughs> Mainly because I want to hear you do one of the adverts he did for Wolves Fancast. <laughs> if we can imitate something like that, then it'd be worth every penny. It got to the point on that advert because I, I did record a different version of the advert because people would then take the mic... Okay. That advert, and I get messaging in about because my the, the the tagline on the advert for this uh, website company was how I bloody I love a bloody good website, yep. and that was the advert that kept playing and playing and playing. So I did record a new one, but I kind of used that tagline again to keep it going, right. but varied up the ad. But then I lost that recording oh, I got it. <laughs> after one week, so I just had to keep playing that same advert every single week. Um, but I bloody love that advert. I really <laughs> did. It was really good. Um, anyway. Thank you very much, everybody, for listening. We'll see you next week for another episode of ADQ and more Christmas questions. Keep them coming in. But for this week, it's bye from Mark. And it's bye from David. See you in a bit.